Hey, what's up everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Fabricator with yours truly. So, a few terms here. Notching, fish mouthing, coping, saddling. These are all industry terms used to describe this series of cuts to make one tube made up to another tube without the gap. That's essentially all it is, and there's a couple of different ways to do that. One is with the use of a tube notcher, which is an actual tool that you set up in the shop. Now, in 15 years of doing this, I've never even owned one. So that leads us to the other method, which is uh, without the use of a tube notcher, doing it entirely by hand, which will allow you to achieve great fitment, very close tight tolerances, and then oftentimes uh, greater fitment and in less time than it takes to use the tube notcher. So first we have our main tube, which has no notching in it. We have our lower tube that will made up to it with our standard 90 degree notch, the easy one. And then we have our kicker tube, which has a 10 degree bend in the middle of it. And we have no particular order of the angle that we're going to cut out here. We're just going to kind of wing it to make it a little bit more realistic. So let's get downstairs and start building on the real model. So to make this a little bit more realistic and not so typical here, I've already fabricated this uh, little stand here. It's just a little plug that slides into the tube and helps it stand up. So I mean, I'm going to try and make it realistically almost kind of like building a roll cage itself, but on this small model here. So we have our main tube. We have our lower tube. And we're going to take that tube and made it up to this one. Very simple. This is the easiest one that we're going to do. But first we need to establish our baseline. Now the baseline is going to be the point at which the bottom of the tube, or even the top of the tube, is going to be made it. This is our visual reference in which to measure. So on this we'll just do four inches. Now if you were doing like a harness bar or even a door bar or whatever the case is, you're going to need to know where the measurement of that baseline is. Hopefully you do. Uh, because they're all very, very specific to the certain class of racing that we're going to do. So, with our baseline in place, we'll stick our tube up here. Alright, now taking a really careful look at this, we can see that there's a big gap there. And that's obviously what the whole purpose of this video is, how to eliminate that gap. But first we need to establish our face line. The face line is going to be the point at which you always come back to for reference or the center line of this tube at the face of which you're looking at it. So at the point of view that you have, you need to mark out the center of it. Now if you'd like, you can extend this line to know that you're always going to mate it up at the exact same place. I usually visually reference the baseline, but sometimes you need to put the extra center line in there. But always on the tube that you're notching, make sure you have your center line. Very, very important. So, if we were to cut this out perfectly with a notch or with anything else, you'll end up realizing that it's almost never going to happen that the tube will cover exactly half the diameter of the tube. It just doesn't happen that way due to wall thicknesses and you know everything else that goes with it. Plus you have to put a little bevel on there for a good solid weld. So, if you look carefully, it's actually about one third the diameter of the tube is the gap that we need to eliminate. One third the diameter of the tube is a general rule of thumb of which you always want to create your notches for and that's going to create our throat depth. Now the throat depth is the depth at which the notch will be cut out to, how deep the notch will go. Which in this case, one third the diameter of an inch and a half is half an inch. So, you can do this on the car, you can do this off the car, whatever the case is. Just make sure you give yourself enough measurement in there. This is our throat depth. So from the top of the tube here to our face line and from the bottom of the tube to our face line this is our notch. These are the two lines that we just marked out that we need to cut. Those are when we stick them in the saw we'll put them in there, we'll slice them out. We're gonna undercut them just to you know because we're gonna have to go through with the grinder and you know do some contouring and you know cut this out and make it fit you know beautifully perfect so let's get over to the saw and get cut. Right, we got it in the saw here you're gonna want your face line up so that you get your same cuts on both sides so that's what the whole purpose of the face line is to make sure that you always have it held up. Cut down. Almost perfect. So one of the reasons why I don't actually lock it in because when I flip it over, I can use the fence here as a guide to make sure that I made it up at the same 45 degrees. So, yeah. 
here's where we're sitting at. I'll bring this other tube over here so you can see. That's almost perfect in all actuality. I mean, we could just clean it up and go with it right now as it is. Um, the fitment's pretty good. I mean, there's, there's a lot of roughness in here and whatnot, but we're going to clean that out with the grinder real quick. Um, I just use a flat disc. Um, I usually like to use and reuse my older ones because they have this nice little contour, so when you dig into here, it cleans it out quite nicely. So we're going to round over this, uh, this edge just a little bit and then uh, slice all this out of here, clean it up nicely. You can use a file, you can use a flat disc, you can use whatever. But to make sure that I made it up there almost exactly in line, I'm going to contour this edge to try and mate with the other tube. So let's get this sliced out real quick. Now that's a much better fit, nice and clean. So what I'm gonna do is take a few minutes here and I'm gonna clean all this up and get it ready to weld, put a couple tacks in, check it out, see where it ends up. But we we'll make sure that when we get rid of all these lines and clean these tubes up, we've gotta make sure that we put our baseline back on here so we know where the tube is gonna sit. So now it's time for the kicker. And why I say the kicker is because, one, we have a 10 degree bend in here, and two, I am not going to place this in any particular style, form, whatever the case is to, uh, to finish all this off here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start at the, uh, the, the lower portion of the tube, and uh, we're not gonna have a baseline in this one. Instead, we're gonna skip ahead to a certain part, which is gonna be our throat line. So you set this up, just kind of visually look at it. You take your marker, you draw a line straight across. That line is now your throat line. So I'm going to unclamp this here. Now I'm just using these little pony clamps on here. I mean, there's a dozen ways to clamp a tube down, but now if you hold this parallel to the lower tube at the uh, position it's going to be sitting at, you look from the end of this line to roughly the end of that line, and you go right down the center of it, which is roughly here. So we'll make our mark. That is your face line. So as we're running around here and we look at this, we say, how do we know where the angle is going to be and which one that we need to cut and where and all the rest of that good stuff? Well, one third tube diameter, which is half of an inch, from the throat line to the top of the face line, half inch, one third diameter. So at this intersection here, we'll take one line from the end of one tube to the center of the face line, one line from the end of the other tube to the center of the face line. And yes, we're going to undercut this. That's the first one cut that we're gonna need to make. So let's go stick that in the saw and see where we're at. And moving on to the top portion, okay. Now, since this is going to have to be uh, still notched out or whatever the case is, to actually place this where it needs to be, notice that uh, we're actually got a pretty big gap going on right here. And uh, that's kind of a quality assurance there or reassurance that it's correct because once we notch this back of this throat out here and contour it around the tube there, this is going to drop straight down anyway. So. Another really interesting lesson you got to learn is if your marks are all on this side of the tube, remember where the saw has to cut. So if your marks are on this side of the tube, that means the tube is going to be sticking out this way. And if the uh, base of the saw is on the left side, uh, then you're not going to be able to hold this in there and, you know, hold it steady with your face line correct and all the rest of that stuff as the, as the saw cuts down. So we need to mark the other side. This rule applies to pretty much everything. So. We need to set it up opposite. And we can kind of visually look at this here. Notice we have the gap down here, which is good. And we're going to kind of hold this in place here and make our throat line. Okay, 
I gotta kind of straighten this out here because I'm working a little backwards now. Now we'll hold this up parallel. Notice how it all kind of seems to straighten out a little bit and this line gets just a little bit crooked. That's good. That's another one of those reassurances. So just the same as before, halfway down the throat line, be about right here is our face line. And again, same rule of thumb, one third diameter of the tubing, which in this case is half of an inch. Now we go from throat line to the intersection of the face line and throat line or face line to the throat line, same as before. And now we'll go cut it. Alright, so we'll put this up here and at first glance you're gonna look at it and say, oh no, I screwed up. Well, actually you didn't. Because this extreme angle right here needs to be cut out with the grinder still. Now this is a little bit crazy, but notice how I've got the base of it mounted flat out here correctly and this hasn't been notched out either so when we actually stick this on here and we say about where it's going to land we're uh we're actually looking really close to where we need to be so what we're going to do is take the grinder cut out those throats contour this around make sure that these edges and these uh throats actually line up where they need to be and hopefully we'll get it right uh pretty quickly Notice how that just kind of snapped right in. That's a clear indication that we pretty much nailed it. Gaps aren't too insane like they used to be. Might have a little bit of trimming still yet to do in that throat, but we'll work on that when we get to the top. We have the correct fitment down below, but up top here, the idea is to take this tube and slide it that way to make it actually fit. Because this gap up here, if we were to actually, uh, you know, throw this out, and then bring it back up or whatever the case is, that would change the angle down below. So the idea is to just slide the tube forward. So in order to do that, we're gonna actually have to overcut from our throat line and bring that inner throat down just a little bit more. And we're talking only fractions here. So once you get the experience and the time doing this, you'll, you'll finally get it. You know, you'll, you'll know how much to cut and where. So we're just gonna put in a little reference line there and we'll start cutting that one out. I remember before when I mentioned that snap fit, notice I don't have anything actually holding this on there. It's only held in by itself, which is nice, clean, perfect fit. So, Get this set up correctly. Lay down a tack. There it is. So what do we actually take away from this video? Well, there's a couple of things here. One, it's entirely possible to notch by hand without the use of a tube notcher and achieve the same angles you would with a tube notcher. Now the second part, and this is entirely up to you, is practice makes perfect, okay? So the more you practice this, the better you get at it, the quicker you will be. And when I say quicker, you can actually achieve these same angles just as we did in this video without the use of a tube notcher and be quicker than using a tube notcher. And that's the most beautiful part. Now it's even better than that one if you don't have a tube notcher that'll go on multiple planes as well as multiple angles, you're going to have to do it by hand anyway. So here's the thing, the better you get at it, the quicker you get at it, the more angles you can achieve without the tube notcher, keep practicing. Most importantly, keep practicing. Then you can eventually you'll find out that you will get your perfect fit every single time. Now one thing I suggest is make this model over and over again. Make a dozen models like this. Make one similar to this, make ones with different bends, different angles, and keep practicing and keep trying at it. The more you practice, the better you're going to become at it. That's all I have for this episode of The Fabricator. Thanks for checking it out, and we'll see you guys on the next project.